Hi there, welcome to the Vickers MG Collection of Research Association. One of the questions we get asked quite often is how we can own firing machine guns in the United Kingdom. Now, obviously there are quite strict and comprehensive gun laws in the UK and machine guns are classed as a prohibited weapon. So we actually possess what's called an authorization to possess prohibited weapons. And to try and answer those questions, explain a bit more about it, I'll uh, try and go through the process. So when I formed the association in 2011, we had a collection of deactivated machine guns, which are a lot easier to own uh, without any licensing requirements. So those are what the collection is based around. And we still hold a number of deactivated guns that anybody can sort of sit behind and have their photos taken or lift up and hold the weight, etc. But our object as the association is to educate and inform people about the Vickers machine gun. So one of the better ways of doing that is to have firing examples. And as with all firearms law in the UK, you effectively need a good reason to possess these things, good person, and good security, a good place. So we have those three, obviously. We have the authorization to possess prohibited weapons. The, the application process for that goes to the Home Office. So you apply to the Home Office, they get in touch with the local police force, which could be any of the counties around the UK, and they help verify whether you have good reason, good people, and good places to keep them. Unlike personal possession of firearms, so section one firearms, rifles, which we possess as well, the good reason has to be business related. And as a not-for-profit limited company, that's our business. Our business is to educate and inform people. So our returns on that are not in the same way that a normal business operates. We don't make profit. We don't pass funds to shareholders or directors or anything like that. But we reinvest in the association, reinvest in the organization. So our good reason is all about demonstrating these weapons to you and helping you understand how the Vickers machine gun was used in service. And it has to be related to the Vickers machine gun. We can't go out and purchase weapons that aren't related. So everything that we have on the table here, which are all our, some of our um, prohibited weapons, they all have to be related to those demonstrations and that education and informing. Our good people, we have to have the same background checks as we would do for possessing firearms under a firearm certificate. Sometimes they're a bit more extensive. Everybody that possesses and handles these weapons, be it just on display for cleaning or anything like that, is classified as what we call a servant. It's an archaic term in firearms law, uh, but a registered firearms dealer, which are those people that will sell you shotguns, rifles to those people that have FACs and shotgun certificates, we're one of those as well. We have to have that as like base. You know, we are a business dealing in firearms, so we have to be a registered firearms dealer. And our servants are all registered under that certificate as well with the police. So they have those background checks as well. Not anybody can come along, pick up a machine gun, even just for cleaning. They have to be a servant. If they want to fire it, we put them through separate training and everything on top of that as well. And then we have good place. So obviously our security, our security has to be greater than what is normally expected for a firearms possession. And obviously depending on what type of firearms it is as well, whether they're handleable. The Vickers is not a weapon that's considered attractive to criminal or terrorist organizations, whereas the Sterlings and the pistols might be, the submachine guns could be. So we have to vary our security is uh, around that as well. And it all takes time. The association was started in 2011. It wasn't until the late 2010s that we got the possession to possess prohibited weapons. So there's this period where we have to justify our back, justify the business, justify people are interested, put the visits and everything in place. And let's say to start with, they were looking at deactivated guns, which are great. They allow people to do many things with them, but the firing is something uh, that we wanted to build on top of that. It took some time through the application process as well to not only get the possession for prohibited weapons, but also the registered firearms dealer to justify the business. And we have to reapply for that every few years. It's not something you can go, you know what? I want to own machine guns in the UK. This has to be part of a wider um, business plan with a clear customer or client base, with a clear output, and with a clear understanding of what you're getting into. So a prohibited firearm is anything covered by Section 5 of the Firearms Act 1968. And commonly, the authorization is just referred to as Section 5. People understand that in the industry, uh, reenactors, etc. as well. But it's not just machine guns. They are full auto. They are the first category that went into Section 5 in 1968. But over recent years, 
you know, additional things have been added as well. So semi-automatic rifles like this, uh, the M1 carbine in its original caliber, that's included as a section five weapon. The pistols are a section five weapon as well, ever since the late 1990s. So, you know, we, we have these, they're all related to the Vickers, whether they would be used by the crews alongside them or perhaps used against the Vickers as well. In the case of the MG42, the M53 variant here that we want to add into the collection at the moment. So you know, they're all part of the ancillary and wider story of the Vickers machine gun and how it was used in service. We hold our Section 5 to educate and inform and do demonstrations around that, but there are other good reasons as well. Um, they're all on a case-by-case -case basis, so don't think you can just like fill in a form and make a business case for it. Uh, but you see reenactors using Section 5 weapons. They may have hired those from somebody that has the Section 5 authorization for theatrical purposes and theatrical purposes are probably one of the bigger reasons why companies in the UK have these authorizations for film work, theatrical work, let's say those demonstrations using reenactors on a weekend, on a show, those kinds of events. Um, we don't do that, we do do our own living history events and we do use people in uniform and, and living historians but it's worth saying that many of those, well all of those are our servants and able to do that. So as part of our case for that good reason, we don't only run our own events, so like the, the visits and the blank firing demonstrations that we'll run here, but also supporting the British Army, running some of their historic studies and doing events like the Historic Firearms Weekend at the Royal Armouries in Leeds. So in summary, you've got the same three basic principles, good reason, good people and good place but they're enhanced. It's got to be a good business reason. It's got to be a commercial business case. You need better security and you'll need deeper uh, background checks and a wider pool of people to be able to use them. So if you want to find out more about it and about the association ourselves, then please come along to one of our visits. Please support us on Patreon and do all that good stuff and ask us the questions.